So in this question, we're told that a boy throws a stone with speed u meters per second from a point O at the top of a vertical cliff. We can see on the diagram our point O is here and we see that it is 18 meters above sea level. We're told that the stone is thrown at an angle alpha above the horizontal where tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. So we see that alpha is this angle in here. We're then told that the stone hits the sea at the point S, which is a horizontal distance of 36 metres from the foot of the cliff. So we can see here that this is the point S on the diagram, and that is our 36 metres from below where the stone is thrown. We're told that the stone is modelled as a particle and it's moving freely under gravity with g equal to 10 metres per second squared. And what we're asked to do in the first part of the question is to find the value of u. So u is the speed that the stone was thrown at. So to start off, we're going to just note down that u is the initial velocity that the stone was thrown at. So we're given that tan alpha is going to be equal to 3 over 4. So therefore, we can use our knowledge of trig to work out what cos alpha and sine alpha are, as this is going to be very useful as we proceed with the question. So as you can see here, I'm going to draw a little triangle in. We have a right angle here, and if we let this be alpha here, we know Sokotoa, and therefore we can say that tan alpha is going to be O over A. So we have that this is A, O, and H, and that's our three sides. So we have that in, from the information we're given, tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. This means, looking at Sokotoa here, that... 3 will go here and 4 will go here. Then using Pythagoras, we see that the hypotenuse will be 5. So therefore, we can say that cos alpha is going to be equal to A over H, which is 4 over 5. And we have that sine alpha is going to equal O over H, which is 3 over 5. So this is very useful and this is going to help us as we move forward with the question. So what we can do now is we can split the motion of the stone into its vertical component and its horizontal component. By looking at both the horizontal and vertical components of the motion, we can then use these to work out the initial velocity u. We do this by solving the horizontal component for t, which will be in the form of an expression in terms of u, and then following on from this, we can use this value of t, which is in terms of u, in our vertical component equation and we'll then be able to rearrange that for u and that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. So how are we going to do this? So for the horizontal component we're going to write out our variables and have a look at what we have. So we know we have suvat. So we want to find the time and that's going to be useful to help us in the next stage. We know that the displacement is 36 meters and the initial speed is going to be u multiplied by cos alpha and we also have that the acceleration is equal to zero meters per second squared and this is going to be all the things that we need to take forward for just now so we are going to use the equation that s is equal to u t so then 36 is going to be equal to u cos alpha multiplied by t and we can then substitute in because we know that cos alpha is equal to 4 over 5. So we'll then have 36 is equal to 4 over 5 multiplied by ut. And then what we can do is we can rearrange this for t. We then divide both sides by 4 over 5, which gives us that 45 is equal to ut. So therefore, we have that t is going to be equal to 45 over u and then taking a look at the vertical component we'll write out our suvat again so this time we know that the displacement is going to be negative 18 meters we're going to have that u is going to be equal to u sine alpha which is going to be equal to u multiplied by 3 over 5 at this point don't know v and then we know that the acceleration vertically is going to be negative 10 meters per second squared. And this is our value of g. And then we do not know the time either. But what we can say 
is that we have an expression for the time in terms of u, which we worked out here. So therefore, we're going to use the equation s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So now we're going to substitute our values in. So we have that the displacement is equal to negative 18. And then we have that u is equal to 3 over 5u. And we multiply that by 45 over u. So then in a second, we're going to see that our u's cancel out. But carrying on for now, we then add on 1 half of negative 10. And then 45 over u squared. So for tidying this up a bit, we'll keep our negative 18 on one side, and then we'll have that our u's cancel out, and then we'll have 3 over 5 multiplied by 45, which is going to be equal to 27, and then we have 1 half multiplied by negative 10 multiplied by 45 squared, and that's going to be equal to negative 10,125. So we have negative 10,125, and we divide that by u squared. So then all that's left for us to do now is we rearrange for u. So we'll have that 10,125 is going to be equal to 45 u squared. And then we divide both sides by 45 and take the square root. So we therefore have that u is going to be equal to 10,125 divided by 45, and we take the square root of that, and put this into our calculator, this comes out as 15, and the unit is meters per second. So therefore, we can conclude that u is equal to 15 meters per second. So in this question, we received our first mark for using the equation s is equal to ut. We then received our second mark at this line here, where we substituted in the values correctly, so we knew that the horizontal displacement was 36, and that the initial velocity u can be written in terms of u multiplied by cos alpha. We then received our third mark for using the next equation of motion, so when we used s was equal to ut plus a half at squared. We then received our fourth mark for getting to this stage here where we substituted our values in. We then get our fifth mark for knowing to use this value of t in this equation here. So we'll just put a second circle here and then receive our sixth and final mark for having the correct answer in the end. So in part b of the question, we're told to find the speed of the stone when it is 10.8 meters above sea level and we're to give our answer to two significant figures. So this question is quite similar to the previous question in the fact that we have to break it down into vertical and horizontal components. So if we can find both the vertical and the horizontal velocities, and then since these are vectors, each with a horizontal and vertical direction, we can then find the magnitude of this vector, which will give us the actual speed at this point. So therefore, starting off with the vertical component, we have this time, so the displacement, so we know it start, we know the stone started at negative 18 meters, and then we now want to find the distance it's traveled when it's 10 meters above sea level, so therefore we add 10.8, so therefore this is going to be equal to negative 7.2 meters. We have that our value of u, so this is gonna be our initial speed, which we've just worked out in part a, multiplied by sine alpha, since it's the vertical component. So that is going to be u sine alpha, which is equal to 15 multiplied by three over five, which is equal to nine meters per second. Then we don't know the velocity, that's what we're trying to find out, and we know that the acceleration is negative 10 meters per second squared. So therefore, the equation we're going to use to work out v, v, the velocity, is going to be v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. So therefore, summary values in, we're going to have 9 squared plus 2, lots of negative 10 multiplied by negative 7.2. And then putting this into our calculator, we have that v is going to be the square root of 225 so therefore we have that v is going to be equal to 15 meters per second. And then for the horizontal component, 
we can just use the equation v is equal to u cos alpha and that's going to be equal to 15 multiplied by 4 over 5 which is equal to 12 meters per second so therefore we can go from two vector components of velocity to a scalar which is speed by finding the magnitude of the velocity vector so therefore we have that the speed is going to be equal to 15 squared plus 12 squared and then we square root this and putting this into a calculator this comes out as 19.209 and so on and we're asked to find this answer to two significant figures so we'll conclude that the speed when the stone is 10.8 meters above sea level will be 19 meters per second. So in this question there was five marks available. We receive our first mark for using this equation here to work out our horizontal component. We then receive our second mark for using this equation here with the correct values to work out our vertical velocity and we then receive our third mark for having the correct vertical velocity. We then receive our fourth mark for knowing to find the magnitude and then we receive our fifth and final mark for having the correct answer which was 19 meters per second. So in part C of this question we're asked to suggest two improvements that could be made to the model. So one thing that first springs to mind is that when a stone falls through the air, there's going to be force opposing it. And this is normally known as air resistance. So therefore, an improvement to the model could be to take into account air resistance. A second suggestion could be to have a look and see what the wind does and how much of an effect the wind has on the stone. This question is worth two marks and we receive one mark for each correct statement we make about an improvement which should be used to improve the model.